I'm Doug. Uh, Dan. <laughs> you, you pause there with a question mark at the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll start. I'll finish. Okay, there you go. Comedy routine. Um, my name is uh, Dan Martin, work for Historic England. Uh, I'm in the capacity building team. Um, and part of that team is supporting the sector in four ways. One is training, one is guidance, one is developing research resources like frameworks, which is what I do, and one is improving access to information, which is what uh, Keith at the back does. Um, that is where it all fits in, and this is part of my work to, to do this, and in specifically talking today is about the research framework side of things. Um, the overarching aims of this sort of whole programme of work for over the last few years uh, and I will, I will go over about exactly what are the frameworks in a second, but it's just to set the scene, is that it's to create a, a sustainable research infrastructure. So it's actually looking at how we can um, develop these frameworks and looking at how they can integrate. Um, a new way of managing the frameworks, so it's moving away from the sort of the traditional method of publishing a book. Um, developing more inclusive frameworks, making it, opening it up to more, uh, to different groups, different um, people, uh, and it's the research community, so it's trying to combine all three things. Um, the main things that we want to get out of it are individual, new individual research frameworks that are maintained, they can be kept up to date, they are accessible, um, they are implementable which I'm not quite sure is a word, but I quite like it. Um, <laughs> basically meaning that we can use it and actually put them into, into investigation, because this is one of the big problems we've always had with research strategies, research agendas, is it's all great on paper. When it actually comes down to doing the excavations, it all falls apart, because you actually find different things, and you're not doing what you, what you want to do. Um, we're also not being blind to the fact that we don't have a huge amount of money. It's not of uh, a never-ending pot of money, so we need to think about the big S word, the sustainability, that everyone talks about, and everyone tries to think about wh where are we going, how can we develop new models and new ways of financing this sort of thing. And then again, it's the whole idea about actually developing the communities, developing the research communities, and um, actually broadening that out to incorporate co communities that haven't been involved so much in the process. And in the process of developing research frameworks, has always been a very important part of a collaborative approach through academic sector, local authority, and the commercial sector, but hasn't really included, for example, the third sector community groups. And this is one of the areas that we're looking at as well. So, just a, a very quick recap for people who don't know what they are. Um, the research frameworks, the traditional model set out in 98 or something, 97, by Adrian Olives, is this sort of three-stage approach. So it's a, having a resource assessment, it's having a research agenda, and it's having a strategy. So it's starting off with, what do we know? What is the base evidence? What do we know currently about a certain period, a certain area, a region, that whole area? The second bit was looking at gaps. What are the gaps in our knowledge? Looking at a research agenda. How can we then start filling these things? What are the questions we want to answer? And then the third one, which has been interpreted in all sorts of ways, is the strategy. How can we actually fulfil all these things we want to do without just saying, apply to national agencies for fund projects, actually thinking about it more clearly and objectively. What are the strategic objectives that we can actually do to try and start answering some of these questions? Um, the format, right up until now, has always been book. A book, a monograph, PDFs if we were lucky, um, so it is literally a text-based approach. The problem with that is that it's all stuck in aspic. As soon as it's created and finished, it, you then wait a year and a half until it's published and printed, and it's already out of date. And it's the whole thing about looking at what happens when we want to update it. Do we have to go through the whole process? And up until now, we've been always on this, this idea of having every 10 years we do it, which means 10 years, as soon as you finish it's already out of date, you start a project and by the time you finish it's already out of date. It's a cycle of always, it's a continuous cycle of pain. Um, no, no, yeah, don't tweet that. <laughs> it's not, it's great. Um, so
So just to put it into context of where these fit, I think you can see the diagram. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, the big. Sorry. Right. <laughs> um, the big focus has been supporting the planning system. So this is where the focus has been for, for me uh, and part of Historic England. So where do these research frameworks fit into that scene? And this is like a sort of cycle of uh, knowledge, cycle of information. So we're starting off here, for example, a planning decision is made, you do an excavation, uh, there are research questions uh, for a written scheme investigation. The information that's produced, the information, thank you Keith. <laughs> The information that the information that gets uh, produced goes into things like the online reporting system, like Oasis. It goes into the HERs, and half the time that is it. That's that little sort of peach melba colour arrow going back. So it's stuck in the HERs. It's information. In many times, it's locked. We've done our bit as part of the planning system. We met the briefs. We achieved what we needed to for the local authorities because we set our stuff to the HER. But the problem is is that actually the stuff, the knowledge within those reports, is that actually going any further? And part of the National Planning Policy Framework in England is all about furthering understanding. And in lots of people's minds, furthering understanding doesn't mean it's stuck in an HR job done. What happens to that knowledge? What happens to that information? So this is where the cycle happens. And this is where the OASIS reporting system comes in and it's extremely important because that information, those reports, also go into the um, archaeological data service, the ADS's library, digital library, where it can be accessed. People can search, you can look at it and get that thing. So that's really important. So the idea is it goes up there to the knowledge creation. So you can recreate the research framework, you can have typologies, different reference collections. So it's that synthesis, bringing all the information together. Then it comes back down into what I was talking about before, the capacity building. So this information, new knowledge, new methods, new ways of doing things can be transferred into guidance, training, and then new research questions, assessment of significance, and then back into the planning. So that's the sort of the, of the idea. So three main project objectives for what we're trying to do with developing the new frameworks is one is developing the content. So we're funding new research frameworks in the east of England, northwest, northeast, and various other places. It's core and essential to what Doug's going to be talking about is that we're moving away from this book to an online site. So it's a digital platform where we can start doing this and start thinking much more logically and better with it all. And then it's the plan for the future, which means that part of the project that Landwood are doing is they also need to come up with a plan, action, management, identifying where the money is. No problem, Doug. That's yeah. the easy bit. Um, so, I will just introduce what are the aims of it, and then I'll pass on to Doug to talk about more of the technical side. Is It is based on a wiki idea, which means it is not a wiki, it's not Wikipedia, but it is based on the wiki idea, which means that we are able to update it, change it, um, comments, that sort of thing. Each framework is its own thing, its own concept. So the Northwest framework looks like the Northwest framework, and so the East of England looks like the East of England one. But it, because it's all on the same back end, it can be managed together and we're reducing our costs and our issues in terms of structures and infrastructure and, techni and technical things. Again, we're moving away from this every 10 years pain of updating things to be able to update it depending on when the, those people who are managing the frameworks want to do it. So it could be yearly, it could be six monthly, it could be on the pump. Um, and then we're also very important, and this is one of the things that we're talking about today, is the fact because we're going on this digital platform, because we want to link across the different frameworks, we need to think about how we can do that. And very much what um, Julian was talking about in the first presentation is it needs to have under, underpinned by data standards, that we need to use the same data standard so that we can start cross-searching, start moving and bringing stuff together. Um, and this is also really important as part of the aim, or one of the aims of the project is to actually get a feed from Oasis, the, the new Oasis, when that comes out in a, in a couple of years' time, I think it is, um, is we need to therefore talk to the people who are creating that, the ADS, 
and be able to make sure that we're using the same data standards, the same vocabularies, the same things, so we can get a seamless link across. Um, there you go, Doug. Have a look at the slides you might not have seen. <laughs> yeah, I, could, I, I know I haven't seen this because my name's spelled wrong. <laughs> yeah. But you got it right on the first slide as well. Oh. Okay, so um, I'm with the team. Oh, with five minutes to go. Okay. Ben, you looked a little too happy about that. Um, we're the team putting together the platform. So it's myself at Langford Research. We have Sarah and Eric who are helping with the linked data. And then over at, well, Stork England, you've already talked, seen Dan a lot. And we also have Ed. Um, and I should say, just going back one part, Originally, the idea was to have it based on a wiki, uh, but when we went out and talked to all the different regional research frameworks, uh, they all came back and said, actually, we don't want just anyone being able to edit it. We'd still like to be able to edit it, we just like a little more control. So in a sense, it's editable, but it's not a Wikipedia in which anyone can contribute. Um, each research framework decides who can contribute and makes a decision. So they could, if, in theory, one of them could open it up as a wiki, and another one could say, we only allow these three people to change it. You must talk to them. Um, and it's, it is just trying to move away from the idea of, we've made this, this monograph, this book, and it's already out of date. Um, and so we're basically looking at a website, uh, a website that will be updatable and something that can also be updatable but trackable. So one of the features we have is uh, when you go to a page, there'll be a citation, and it'll tell you what the date was, and I'll have a link to an archived version. So especially um, in England, a lot of the local authorities, um, or well, actually a lot of the commercial units, uh, link to the research framework um, and their WSI. And if for some reason you know it changes in the future, they still need to be able to go back and look at that date and say, actually, this is the research framework as it was three years ago on February 2nd at 2 p.m. Um, and that's what we went with. So it's changeable, but it also continues and has a history so that we're not just reinventing a wheel and every time you go to it, it'll be something different and you can't track it. We're mainly focusing on questions. Um, so each question basically is an entity in a database. And uh, the idea is that questions could potentially be shared across different uh, research frameworks. So uh, if let's say, two regional research frameworks have the same question of, you know, when did the Mesolithic start in, you know, X um, region, you could just take the question, when did the Mesolithic start? And that way you can track questions across research frameworks, see who's asking the same questions, who's answering them, and where they're going. All of this is going to be um, underpinned by essentially the standards that have already been established. We're not looking to add one more standard to what is already many. Um, and so we're using things like heritage data um, and period O. And if you're not familiar with period O, it's a wonderful gazetteer of different time periods. Um, so you can say, I'm going to use the example of Scotland, just a perfect example. Uh, Scotland's Iron Age goes a lot longer than England's Iron Age. And depending on what part of Scotland you have, you don't actually have a Roman period. Same time, um, but if you were to use a term like Roman period, it wouldn't translate. But with period O, you can get the dates and you can be able to say, oh, they're talking about the Roman period in England. That's actually the Iron Age in Orkney. Um, and we're using fish data so people can be able to tag these questions and be able to search cross questions. So uh, if your question is related to settlement, you can tag it settlement and then you'll be able to pull up a list of all the questions that are related to settlement across all research frameworks, see what other people are doing, what other questions are being asked. Um, and how things are linked. And so it's not just silos. It's not just one regional research framework or one subject research framework. You're basically connecting them all together. Um, and so these are some of the, right there, basically these are the tags we're going to do. Um, and we're hoping that we're saving time by having people not repeat the same questions and tagging them. And um, one, of the, one of the goals is uh, we'll get it to work at some point is to be able to pull stuff from Oasis and basically, all right, I'm sorry guys, this is gonna flip really quickly backwards. Um, 
So right now, every time someone does a resource assessment, they have to basically start from scratch. Um, you can look at previous research frameworks, but then you have to go and you have to look at every single uh, great literature report, everything else again. And so what we're hoping to do is that um, we'll be able to pull stuff from Oasis. And so you'll just have a list next to question saying, actually, this is the newest research coming in on that. And vice versa, uh, with the new Oasis, the idea is they'd be able to pull questions from um, us and be able to put that in the form. So when you're filling out your Oasis form, you'd be able to say, actually, this, this project is related to these questions in nor the Northwest and stuff like that. So it's all linking together so that you're not having to silo your information. You don't have to keep going to different places and basically redoing the same thing. Um, and so that's, that's the goal. And we're really looking forward to it. Um, we're in beta testing at the moment with this project. And we should actually, at the end of the month, I'm told, we will have... This month? Uh, oh, sorry. End of, <laughs> end of November, end of November. Oh. It feels November. like November already. In a, sorry, in a month, I should say. Uh, we should have the first websites live and people will be able to see the regional research frameworks and how it's working. And the idea is um, this will all hopefully solve a couple of these problems. Um, and basically, you'll be able to have this update. Um, you'll have these questions can be updated as well and answered. So you'll have the most recent questions. And hopefully that keeps happening and people keep asking questions. And another aspect that we haven't really touched on, but similar to questions, is strategic objectives and plans and stuff like that. So they'll be linked to it as well. But ideally, everything will keep updating and we won't have to do this big get together every 10 years. It can be every month in the pub or something. Thank you very much.